Okay, this one will need a clutch. So the first thing that's got to come off is this top part. And you turn it to the right just about a quarter of an, uh, an inch or so. And you can see it will come right up. And you can pull this off. And the next thing that's got to come off is this nut that holds this agitator on. Some agitators are different, but this is the most typical one right here. It's a 916. And you need a long extension to get to it for a nut driver. Then you should be able to pull the agitator right off. I like to pull them off in one piece, but let's pull them off in two pieces. And you can see that this agitator should have a, it's like a little Teflon washer or Teflon skid that goes on the outside of it and there's none on here, it's not a big deal. Um, it's just that um, it may tend to wear the agitator out, but I've actually never seen one of these agitators wear out. The only agita agitator wear I've seen are these dogs go out. And these dogs, these dogs on this one are no good, so they have to be replaced. When it spins like this without grabbing, then you got a problem. It should spin fine this way, but when it spins like this freely, then you need to replace these dogs inside this agitator. And so these dogs uh, are basically this, these little doodads here, the, the little uh, things on the side, and they grab the splines inside there. And so we're going to do that second. First we're taking this off. And then once you've taken that off, and then you take this little clip off here, and then this little piece right here. Then you need to pull, either pull, uh, what I normally do is I'll just pull the machine out and tip it. And then so I can get to the bottom of the trans transmission. Once you've taken the, there's like three bolts. They're half inch socket bolts. Once you've taken those three half inch socket bolts off the bottom of the transmission, you can lower the transmission. But first you have to remove the water pump from the motor. You don't have to take the water pump uh, off the tub. You need to remove it from the motor. You can take it off the tub if you want, but I don't normally if I don't have to. Sometimes it, um, it's hard to uh, maneuver. You should take the water pump off the tub because sometimes the hoses leading from the tub to the pump will fail if you bend them too much. Okay, so let's get to the bottom of this. Okay, so we have the machine tipped on the side. If you tip it, here I had to disconnect the drain hose. Be very careful with the fill hose. I'm not going to disconnect them. Um, I'm leaving it plugged in because I'm not really going to be touching any wires except to disconnect the motor. But you should probably disconnect it because working with appliances can be hazardous. Consult your local professional if necessary. And so if we look under here, see that of a little leaky transmission. Not too bad. Here's the water pump. This water pump has to be disconnected. There are two clips that hold that water pump on. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, a light on the subject. This is the first clip. And so this clip is your typical water pump clip for these models. Direct drive. There are two. One on the top and one on the bottom. And then once you've taken the two clips off, you will be able to take the water pump off. Normally, you can't take these off. If they're leaky, they can sometimes uh, rust onto that shaft, and they're very tricky to get off. And sometimes you actually have to break them off because they just uh, don't, they're just rusted on there. Uh, mainly, they get rusted because they leak. And here's your motor disconnect wires. And there is actually a wire here on this motor. That's an extra wire here for maybe a multi-speed with a... That is actually the 
temperature sensor unit. It's like a overheat fuse that will shut the motor off if it's under stress anyway. So we have that, those wires that connect to the motor. Once we have these connect disconnected, then we can take those three half inch bolts out and drop the transmission and then access the clutch. I was checking this back spring because these back springs notoriously get rusty and break through and cause the out of balance scenario. Oh, it's good to check your, your feet here. These are the feet for the tripod. There are three of them. There's like a plastic shoe or foot underneath this that pops in the base. And so if your machine is acting like it's out of balance, you might want to check these feet or shoes. There's one there, one there, and one there uh, on top of that tripod uh, in between this piece here and this. And so let's pull, let's drop that transmission down and take a look at that clutch. <laughs> okay, so, I don't, I know I don't have a new clutch. I may have a, a rebuild clutch for this, and because I'm way out here in the sticks, I'm going to uh, try and rebuild this clutch here. And so that's basically, your, see your, you see the clutch, and it looks like it's got some grease on it. And... There's actually, okay, so this cap, that little cap normally sits on top of that greasy, but what happens is grease sometimes gets sloshed up from the transmission up the shaft and then gets on that clutch. And sometimes you can just get by by cleaning that clutch and expanding that, stretching that spring. And what I do is I etch the side of this clutch bell and sometimes etch the clutch shoes. And so well, that's what we're going to try and do on this one. And anyway. and we can see this clutch has got some debris inside of it. Yeah. And we got a little bit of oil. Like not much, but a little bit of oil on it. Looks pretty worn out, but not too far gone. I think we can clean this up and make it work. Let's give it a try. Okay, so in order to clean this clutch off, what I'm going to use right now is glass cleaner because it's the only thing I have out here in the boonies. And so basically, we want to make sure that uh, all the grease is off this. I've already sprayed this glass cleaner, but you can see there's grease on it or oil. It's actually gear oil. I've cleaned a little bit of it up already, but. You can see there's grease on it, and then there's not too much, but a little bit in here. And what we'll do is we'll etch this um, and put some cross hatches on it so that this clutch grabs a little bit tighter. And then I'll take my two pliers, my two vice grips or whatever, and spread that spring out a little bit so we it, it, that spring goes right in between that gap on that clutch. And if we spread that spring out and clean that clutch up and then clean this up and etch it, it should work fine. And so if you need it... Okay, so I cleaned the clutch up a little bit here. And I've also stretched the spring out. So there's a little rubber thing in there that keeps it from chattering. That little rubber piece you need to keep in there. But basically you want to stretch the spring out. What I did is I used... Uh, you can use two uh, uh, pliers or whatever and spread spread, them, spread this apart. You don't need to spread it out much, just a little bit. If you clean, and you can look at these uh, clutches. If the clutch is worn down to that uh, brass ring inside there, you probably wouldn't be able to do anything with that. You definitely want to get all that dirt and grunge out of there. There's still a little bit of grunge in there. You can see, and so I need to take this rag and get in there and get all that grunge out. There's still a little bit of grunge in there. But I have uh, cleaned up this with the cleaner, and I've etched it. And you can see the little lines in the clutch. And that'll help it grab. If you help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347 Pacific Time. And I would appreciate a $25 donation for a phone consultation. I've got 25 years of experience in um, doing odd jobs, and particularly um, 
working on appliances. I also have an email, appliancesworks at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.